let's start here. Um, so, so yeah, we encourage everyone to participate uh, by opening uh, your camera, but that's completely optional. Thank you for everyone to make the time this afternoon to join our uh, creative coding workshop. Today's talk. Is on. Hey, yeah. yes, this way we can say hi, kind of face to face, the new uh, reality, virtual. Um, so on behalf of EYA team, just wanted to share with you that a little bit about what we do. Uh, we've been around for, uh, this is our fifth year in Toronto. We're a Toronto-based uh, non-for-profit group. We're focusing, given our name, on emerging young artists. Uh, An artist today is uh, broadly defined. Uh, so we normally have a lot of offline events like art exhibitions, music concerts, festivals, offline workshop. Uh, and uh, we try to put on new programs every once in a while. Uh, now with the COVID, we're trying our best to uh, transition to uh, in an online uh, model. So this is part of that attempt. Um, we definitely encourage you to follow us on Instagram. We also have our website. It's uh, Emerging Young Artists with the plural, with the S, dot org. Um, that way you can kind of see uh, some of our past projects, our mission, if you are an artist yourself, or if you are someone who is participant, uh, like passionate to, to support the artist community, feel free to reach out to us. We are here for you guys. Thank and you. I wanted to um, introduce uh, Catherine Yiji, uh, who also is hosting today's workshop, and George. Um, so we are a small team that is developing our creative coding program uh, that's part of Emerging Young Artists. So I want um, to have Catherine maybe talk about that for just a little bit as well. Sure. Uh, the Creative Coding Club, you guys can find our uh, meetup page and you also can find our previous workshop in uh, Emerging Young Artists website. I will post two websites in the chat place later. So uh, since last year, we start to have this program inside EYA is trying to build a bridge between art and the tech. So uh, we have one creative coding instruction workshop in the last year to generally talk about what technology involved in uh, art fields these days. And then we also had another front end uh, Inter interactive workshop last year. So this time we want to try a little bit uh, uh, AR technology to let people know like what you're playing on your phone and uh, what high tech you see on website anywhere actually is not that far from us. So in today's workshop, you don't need any coding skills and uh, you just need your computer follow each step. Then you may can may make a very cute animation uh afterwards so hope everyone will enjoy the workshop uh okay so hi my name is harrison hutchin um i am the instructor for the course today uh we're learning how to build a augmented reality application using unity and euphoria now um one thing that a lot of people I, I heard that some people are unsure about is uh, what the difference, well, like what augmented reality is versus virtual reality and uh, mixed reality. So augmented reality is when you have a second. I'm just having issue finding Zoom right now. Where'd Zoom go? Oh, there it is. Oh, perfect. Okay. Just so I can share my screen later. Okay. So yeah. Um, the augmented reality is when you for, it, take your phone, for example, and it. You point at an object, and then a 3D object is superimposed over that physical object. Um, virtual reality is when you wear a headset on your face to, uh, in order to like enter basically a virtual world. And mixed reality is a mixture of virtual reality and uh, and basically a green screen. Uh, like, I mean, some people throw around the term mixed reality for a variety of things. But for the most part, mixed reality is typically used to describe using virtual reality, but having a green screen behind you that makes it appear using video editing that you're in, that you exist within the virtual space, uh, which can be pretty interesting. But uh, I'm going to share my screen now and kind of show you what we're going to be doing today. Um, there we go. Share screen. Share that one. So can you see what I've got here? Um, you might want to select my uh, Harrison PC 
and, uh, and force that one to display because when I'm speaking, it might try to prioritize me. I'm not sure though. Um, yeah, we can see it. Perfect. Okay. So this, what we've got here is uh, a video I took of a book that I have, um, an augmented reality art book where I, you basically have this art book and you point your phone at the book. Oh, it doesn't like the resize. You point your phone at the book and it animates the art. So here it is going around again. Uh, usually with sound, but I have uh, the sound disabled, so I didn't think it would actually work on my phone properly. But you can see wow. it, it, it superimposes an object or like a scene over top of a physical picture. Even with like, complete with like, you know, lighting, even if you do that. Um, this app is pretty cool, and the, the art book, I, I really enjoy it. So you're going to be doing something, you know, to this effect. Uh, I'll show you the completed project of uh, what you'll be working on. Um, I guess, wait, sorry, should I just be introducing myself right now? Yes, please. <laughs> sorry, my bad. Uh, I got, I jumped way too far into it. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little nervous. But uh, so yeah, my name's Harrison Hutchin. I, um, I'll unshare my screen for the second so that way you can see, actually see my camera. Uh, my name's Harrison Hutchin. I, um, I'm a software developer or an inter uh, interactive media developer um, in Toronto. And the reason why I use such a general term is because I work on pretty much anything interactive. I, uh, video games for PC, mobile uh, experiences, virtual reality, augmented reality, um, pretty much anything that includes like user interaction and is an uh, interactive experience. Um, and currently I'm uh, pretty much freelance. And uh, I'm also an author for Pluralsight, which is a website where you can learn a variety of technical skills. I have two courses up there. Another one, if you want to explore after this, this course is relatively simple, re like com when it comes to augmented reality. Um, if you want to take it to the next level, uh, my course on Pluralsight teaches AR interaction. So that might be like the next step forward for you if you're looking for something to challenge yourself with. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, I guess, what was it? The most interesting thing I've done lately? Yes. But it has please. to be that I got a puppy yesterday. <laughs> I, just, I saw a bunch of, of muted faces in the grid. A bunch of muted faces just go. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just lost. That's a big commitment. <laughs> Honestly, that is the appropriate reaction because he is the cutest little dog of all time. Um, he is a Maltese Yorkie Pomeranian mix, so literally all of the cutest, smallest dogs you can possibly get combined into one. Uh, and I'm getting people say that they want to see the puppy. Um, we might be able to get a chance to show you uh, by the end of the workshop. You know what? As a reward for completing all the hard work in this workshop, I will bring the puppy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll wait for that. Uh, um, but yeah, so his name is Tulio. Uh, named after the character from Road to El Dorado, um, and he is the cutest little guy ever. So, uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's what I've done recently. Um, so yeah, I will uh, make sure to bring him in uh, later in the workshop. And that's everything for me. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you. So everyone get a chance to introduce yourself. And uh, let's start. Uh, before we start, do you guys still have any question about Instel Unity and uh, about the assets? You can ask Harrison now. Everyone's all good? Yeah. And Harrison, you know, feel free to take pauses um, when we're using the assets uh, and when we're just opening Unity so we get a little bit more familiar with the interface first. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, for those of you who are having trouble with the app so far, uh, I believe this is being recorded, so you might be able to follow along afterwards if you manage to get Unity working. Yeah, we'll share. 
Okay, perfect. So you can see my screen now, right? So uh, before, I guess, I, like I showed you the uh, the video um, of what is possible with uh, with augmented reality art. Um, so I'm going to show you the sample that we're going to be creating today. Um, hopefully this works. I have a bit of a weird, complicated setup on my end, but this is using my webcam. So you can see me on the webcam, and this is the animation. You got a little mm. cat, bumps into the cactus, floats away. I'm going to see if I can make that bigger for you, because <laughs> uh, that is a little small. Um, game, maximize on play. Oop. And there we go. That's a little better. And so this is on a picture of a cactus, just over like um, the background is just a pile of leaves. That's uh, that will be explained. The reason why will be explained very soon. Um, but this is what you're going to be working on today. And uh, and yeah, hopefully it's going to be a good time. So this is Unity right now, but I'm going to close this and we're going to open up a new Unity project. So first things first. You might have the assets that you uh, downloaded for the course. I've got the zip file here. So I'm just going to give you guys a second to find it um, and unzip it. So I'm just unzipping this to my desktop for uh, the sake of just ease of understanding and all that. So in here, in this folder, we've got, uh, oh, is this a dated one or not? Oh no, yeah, we're good. Okay, so um, so we've got this image target controller. That's just a script we'll, we'll worry about later. And then we've got images. In the images folder, we've got animation frames. So these are all of the images for your animation. Uh, let's make these bigger. Can we make these bigger? Uh, extra large icons. Perfect. So here we've got each frame of the animation you just saw. And that's and we'll use these basically to animate uh, our art. Um, and here we've got our image targets. An image target is basically what the augmented reality app looks for in order to uh, create an augmented reality experience. So once you've uh, located that and extracted it, open up Unity Hub. and make sure you have the correct version of Unity installed. And then we're going to create a new project. Brand new. And uh, we're going to select the 3D template and name our projects anything you really feel like naming it to make it easy to find, but I'm going to just call mine AR Art Workshop. And then click Create. Is everyone currently on this page? Yeah, sorry if, um, if, if anybody is not currently here yet. I'll give you guys a moment. We want to click New. In Unity Hub, and then create a new project. And this will take a moment to load all the relevant packages. Um, also, I'm not sure if from here I'll be able to see uh, anybody's chat, uh, like text chat or anything like that. So, um, Catherine or uh, Clara, if you were able to like notify me if somebody's asking questions through chat. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, great. actually, there's just a question now. Someone Tianren is asking, can I use Unity 2018? Um, 
it is not recommended. There is a chance that it would work, but uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, but uh, give it a, you can give it a try um, cause, because the package that we're installing, oh, actually, no, that might be too tough because I think they might handle how you installed Euphoria a little bit differently. Mm. Um, and we might encounter some problems there. Okay. For the ones who haven't uh, downloaded Unity and installed and create accounts before the workshop, um, might be a little bit difficult to do that right now. So feel free to just follow the workshop with the screen share and we will post the video afterwards. Uh, we'll make sure that you have a reference for what's happening today. Okay. Uh, we've got some, some things from chat. Sounds good. I can, can I use you? Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, feel free to put thumbs up once done. Perfect. Um, so once you've created your new project, you should see something like this. Um, let me know if the text is too small. I did try to increase the text size. Oh, How's big. It? It's, it's big. It's big. Okay, good. <laughs> it's good. Last uh, when we when yeah. we uh, tested the workshop, the text was tiny. Um, so this is the default Unity layout. Uh, you might have something that looks similar, maybe a little bit different layout-wise, but for the most part, this is how Unity looks. Um, well, everybody else is. I think it, everybody's doing well. Can uh, everyone give me a thumbs up if you've got something like this up? Or make sure to let me know if not. Unity's taking a while to load. Okay, no worries. Still loading. Okay, I'll give everybody a second um, before I start explaining the layout. Especially if this is your first time opening Unity, uh, you may have it may take a little bit of time. We got one person ready. Done, good. Yes, you need some time. Yeah, so you might have some. Uh, I, I see your message, uh, Stephen. Sometimes you uh, might see a different layout um, depending on. Oh yeah. Uh, for the simple scripts to follow, we will be leaving a, uh, uh, a follow-up document that basically outlines everything we've done today. So you should be able to step by step see what we're, we did today and, uh, and follow along even without the video. Sounds um, good. Yeah, the video will be clear enough. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and what was I going to say about the layout? Oh yeah, depending on your computer, it may load a different layout. Um, but for the most part, all of the important panels should be there. If not, make sure to let me know if you're not seeing a panel. Make sure to keep the chat open. Actually, if you say something in the chat, that's probably the easiest way to get my attention um, because uh, that way you don't have to worry about talking over everybody and then I'll be able to just um, respond to the chat. Okay. So Maliha's still loading. <laughs> I think we've got quite a lot of us ready now. Quite a lot of people ready. Uh, okay, I will pick mirror. Um, I'm just going to be explaining the layout. So if you're still waiting for Unity to load, you, you've got a little bit of time. Um, so this is the Unity editor, what you're seeing here. We've got on this side, the hierarchy. The hierarchy is where all of your objects will go. So anything like, uh, like for example, like I will show you. If I wanted to create a sphere, I could just pop a sphere into the hierarchy. So this is where basically everything in your scene, as it's known, everything in your scene exists. In the middle here, we have uh, two important panels. 
the scene view, which is kind of like a free camera view where you can see everything in the scene. So I can kind of like rotate around this ball here. I'm, I'm holding uh, alt and clicking, by the way, um, just to let you know what I'm doing to rotate around the ball. Um, and so you can see everything here. In the game view, you see the scene the way it's meant to be seen in the game. So if you were making a game with Unity, this is what the player would see, where this is just the editor view. So you can move stuff around in a free cam sort of way. On the right here, we have the inspector. The inspector shows all of the information about the selected object. So we have the sphere selected. Uh, it's got a transform, which is its position and scale. So we can scale it up here and you'll see the numbers change and change the position. You can uh, do all that with these little tools up here. Um, and then these little areas here where, that, I can, that I'm minimizing right now, these are known as components. Now, components in Unity are basically like little utilities that tell the object what to do. So we, here we have a mesh filter and a mesh renderer that basically tell the object that it's a sphere and then a sphere collider, which allows this object to collide with other physics objects. Now, that, all of these three uh, and what exactly they do, not super important for the workshop, but these are all components. Um, and we will be messing with uh, that concept, the concept of components at least a little bit very soon. So there we go. We are, oh yeah, right down here, this is also important, <laughs> is uh, the project tab. So the project tab is basically a folder, like folder viewer that shows you your project's directory. So we have assets, and then we have scenes, and currently we have saved sample scene. That's this scene here. Um, and so our first step actually of the workshop, if everybody is ready, why, oh, I'm um, saying, why, why is my sphere a 2D object? Um, there's a chance that maybe you uh, initialize the project in 2D view. If you have by mistake, click on the scene tab and click 2D. There's a, as you can see, like my camera, how my camera position changes when I click that. So you may have so like created a 2D project. If you have, it's not the end of the world. Uh, Unity flips pretty seamlessly back and forth from 3D and, and 2D. So just click the 2D button and it should revert back to the 3D perspective if that is in fact the case. Um, so if everybody's ready to move on uh, and has Unity working, we will do our first step of importing our assets. So that this is gonna be our, our, our sprites, our images. So right click on the, click the assets folder first in the project tab, right click in this panel here where it says assets. So this is inside the assets folder. Move your mouse to create up at the top here and then click the top option, which is folder. We're just creating a folder to hold our assets. Now, uh, I'll give you guys a second. So now, once you have your folder created, we're just gonna call it sprites. Sprite, uh, a sprite is just kind of a, a term for a 2D image that's manipulated by, um, that's manipulated by a program such as Unity. Um, I keep looking over here because I'm used to looking at my webcam. I keep forgetting that. Actually, I don't even think people can see me right now. Um, so in the sprites folder, just open that up, right click, go to import new asset right here. It's in the middle, import new asset. Oh, hey, Maliha can see me, fair enough. Um, import new asset that will open this file picker. Currently I'm on my desktop. Navigate to the assets folder that came with the, uh, that came for the workshop. Go to images, 
animation frames and then select all of the images in this folder, one to 24. And I'll just give it a second so everybody can get to this part without, uh, I'm not just uh, plowing ahead of everybody. So we're going to inside CC, AR, art, underscore assets, images, animation frames, and we're getting one to 24. And we are putting that in our sprites folder. So I'm gonna click import. And now you should see all of the images in your sprites folder. And they might look a little wonky at the moment. Like you'll notice some of these up here have this big black bar. That's just uh, some issues dealing with transparency, but we'll fix that in a moment. So I'm just gonna give everybody a second, make sure everybody has their sprites imported. And if you have any questions about this process, by the way, uh, make sure to let me know. Oh, I keep forgetting that I can annotate and zoom. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm just a little excited because I, I might use the little drawing thing to point stuff out. Because um, that seems really handy. Uh, okay, uh, can you repeat? What, is, what does Sprite stand for? Um, so Sprite is pretty much just a term for a 2D image that uh, is manipulated by an editor such as, such as Unity. So that like that exists within a game, usually an interactive experience. But um, so, for example, like each of these images is a sprite. Uh, that's why we're putting the sprites folder. Or if you like, for example, if you're playing Mario, um, the little image of Mario and all of Mario's frames would be uh, sprites. I even tried to look up where the term came from, like keyframes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, like the main difference being that it's just being, it's being moved by the program. Um, as opposed to like a movement being simulated as in an animation, it's like being moved by code, for example. Um, is everybody, has everybody got their sprites in their sprites folder? Yeah, please give us a thumbs up or a Say yes in Thumbs the chat up or box, yes. please. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, yeah, we're getting a lot of yeses. Yep. Excellent. Um, so now, uh, speaking of, you know, sprites, uh, select all of these, all of these sprites in here, and we are going to, in our inspector, over here, oh, I'm going to do an annotate. Here I go. Can't stop me. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> in the inspector. You got it. Uh, is it showing up? Perfect. Yes. Click this drop down. Oh, this is so exciting. Um, <laughs> click this drop down and select Sprite 2D and UI. This will help with our transparency issue that you, you're already seeing right now. Um, once you have Sprite 2D and UI selected, we want to scroll down and click apply. And when you click apply, you'll see all of your sprites change to have some transparency in the background. There we go, perfect. Now all of our sprites have transparency. Okay. Now we're going to add Vuforia. So Vuforia is the technology that we're using to create uh, an augmented reality app. Um, it is free to use uh, for personal use. Um, and there are also a lot of other options that you can use with Unity. So if you decide to come back and explore Unity a little bit more, um, there are other AR technologies available. <clears throat> and uh, 
but we're using Vuforia today because it's it's free and it's pretty easy to use. So to install, um, can uh, I actually have one second? Uh, I guess I'll give everybody a second to get this done. I'm going to get some water because my throat is actually really dry. Is that, if that's okay with everybody. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, excellent. I, I will be, oh, the transparency question. Um, I'll do that quickly. Um, so right now, like before the, our sprites were, didn't have a, a transparent background. They were pure white um, with some artifacts where like, for example, like the one and two had a big black border. Um, now that we've set it to sprite, the texture type to sprite 2D and UI, that allowed the transparency layer to render. Okay, I'm gonna be very quickly back in a moment. I'm just gonna grab. Okay, thanks for waiting, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, I'll make sure you get an extra minute of puppy time to make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've got our sprite, um, we're going to add Euphoria to our project. <clears throat> so up in the top corner here, click the window menu. Uh, so up at file, edit, assets, game object, component, window. Click Window, and then Package Manager. <clears throat> and you should get a little window like this. A whole bunch of packages. <clears throat> we can ignore pretty much everything you see here, um, except for at the bottom, we want Vuforia Engine AR. And this is the reason why um, I was not sure if 2018, Unity 2018 would work, because Euphoria is installed differently in Unity 2018, um, which is why I, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to, uh, if you'd be able to follow the same set of steps. However, if you're using an older version of Unity um, and you look up how to install Euphoria, uh, it's it's actually quite quite straightforward. Um, there's like literally a checkbox somewhere. Um, so if you decide to follow along later, you should be able to uh, get it installed and follow basically the exact same steps. Uh, Bing Chun is saying that he does not he does not see any packages. Anyone else who has the same problem, please let us know. Um, if you don't see any packages, there is a little refresh button down here that should load them. Um, let me know if that if clicking the refresh button fixes it. No refreshing button. No refreshing button. Uh, so <laughs> Is you this went Unity to, 2000? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope it's not too old a version. The so window package oh, manager. 20, it's 2018. It's Unity 2018. 2018. Um, OK. Uh, Anyone else who has the same problem? Um, you know, If not, then maybe, Bing Chen, you could um, follow through with the rest of the workshop and go back to the video um, once you download the newest Unity. Uh, yeah, uh, that might be the best way yeah. to go about it. Um, unless there's a way I can quickly point out you, a, a way you might be able to, to follow along if I'm, if I'm fast about this. Um, project settings, layer. Okay, so just a quick, for anybody who's using 2018, um, I know that the, some people out there are doing that. If you open up, uh, you go to edit, project settings, and then click player. Um, again, it might be a different set of steps if it's, if it's Unity 18, uh, 2018. But if you do that and go to XR settings, here, uh, on the either here or on Windows, 
or whichever, um, as you can see, you've got like virtual reality and stuff here. You will see Vuforia uh, augmented reality. This is where it used to be. Um, so that's in project settings, player settings, and then in XR settings, you should see something about Vuforia. And once you get that installed, you'll pretty much be able to follow the exact same steps that we're going to be doing today. That is really the main difference between the two versions. OK. So now that we have Vuforia, uh, I guess if everybody, oh, right, I haven't actually installed it yet. Um, there we go. So for everybody else, open your package manager, click Vuforia Engine AR, and then click the install button. Depending on your internet speed, this might take a second. Okay, uh, it's installed on my end. I'll wait till everybody else is ready. It's in under Windows. Window. Window. And then package manager. Am I able to get the annotate? Oh no, it goes away when I use annotate. Oh, I can go back to mouse. Window. Now let me click the draw. Damn it. Ah, well, yeah, it's, under, it's over here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's too fun. Um, okay, so I'll give everybody a second. Taking, yeah, it might depending on your internet speeds, it might take a second because it's it's uh, downloading. Uh, all of the Euphoria assets, or at least like some of them. Uh, we'll also install a few more in a bit. So I'll give everybody a second to make sure. Um, we might even be able to move on to the next step while people wait, because the next step is in the web browser. So we might be OK to move on to the next step while we wait. Um, but I'll, I'll still give everybody a second, just not to overwhelm it. Anybody? Cool, I see some, some that already found it on 2018. Nice. Found it on 2018, excellent, excellent. I'm happy to hear that. Um, yeah, because like once you found it, if you're pretty much good for the rest of the, uh, yeah, XR settings, perfect. And we're getting a lot of duns. Awesome. <laughs> Make sure to throw a not done into the chat if you're still waiting because um, if, if I see enough duns I might scoot forward with everything. Udini cheated me. He said 2019 Udini helped install the 2018 version. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's bad. Uh, okay. Well, on the bright side, if you found the in, in the XR settings, um, you will be able to follow along. It is virtually the exact same steps. Um, almost nothing is different. Um, and if you have 2018, um, my course on full site actually is in 2018. So that will work out if you decide to take the next steps learning this stuff. Um, I'm seeing a lot of duns. So I am, I guess other people are just waiting for it to install, right? So I am going to. Uh, move on to the next step, which yes. is in the web browser. So just open up whatever web browser you're using and go to the Vuforia developer portal. So um, you should have created an account for, uh, for, uh, bleh, for Vuforia uh, before you've started the workshop. And it's going to be very important in a second uh, for what we're making today. I'm just going to wait till everybody's logged in to the Vuforia and click License Manager. Currently, I'm on the License Manager. 
that's where you want to go when you've entered the developer portal. Um, I'll remind everybody in about five minutes or so. Throw a done in the chat. Yep, when you're there. Perfect. Excellent. Seeing a lot of duns and yeps. That's what I like to see. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Looks like we've got quite a lot of duns and yeps. How many people do we have today? Uh, around 29, not, not 28, not including the four of us. Dang. Okay. That's just, uh, just to get myself. Uh, okay. Malia has still installed the D4 package taking a while. Yeah. This is just to get me an idea of like who's, like how many duns and yeps I should be seeing before I, before I move on with something. Um, and Maliha, you, you should be able to follow along still um, if you're waiting for Euphoria to install, because this will just be in the, in the web browser. Um, so once you've opened up the Euphoria Engine Developer Portal and License Manager, uh, we're gonna be creating a license key. So Euphoria is free, but in order to use it, we still need a key in order to enable it within our application. So what we're gonna do is click get development key up here. And you're gonna name it. Um, I already have one called AR Workshop. So I'm just gonna say AR capital and the lowercase t for art because I'm super clever. <laughs> and then I'm gonna check this box and click confirm. And so this is just, as you can see, actually it's license key, no, no charge, um, thousand per month for targets and stuff. It, because it's a personal license, um, we can just go ahead and use it and click confirm. And then I'm gonna click uh, once that's done. Once uh, you've created your license key, it should show up in this little table here. And I'm gonna click that and you're all gonna see it. <laughs> so if anybody's a quick writer, you can steal mine if you want, because it's quite large. So here is my license key. So you click it, you'll be able to see your license key. If, key, if you click the key itself, you'll copy it to the clip, uh, you'll copy it to the clipboard. Um, so once everybody has clicked this, uh, drop a done or a yup in the chat to let me know, because then we'll be going back to Unity. And hopefully Maliha will have, uh, or anybody who's still waiting on Euphoria to install, uh, let me know, because the next step kind of requires it to be installed. Okay. I think Maliha's Maliha is done too. That's great. Wonderful, okay. So next up, now that we've got our development key copied in our clipboard and Euphoria installed, we click window again. That's where we went to get our package manager. Um, and then we click Euphoria configuration. So window, Euphoria configuration. I'm actually gonna take out one of my headphones because I think Curing myself muffled is making me talk strange. Um, I guess let me know if I'm speaking clearly. <laughs> um, or if you can't hear me well. So we're clicking Vuforia configuration. Now this will open up a panel in the inspector on the side here where we have a uh, field for app license key. So you open up the Euphoria configuration and you paste your app license key in the box. You don't need to click the button. The button uh, will just open up the website, so you don't need to click it. Um, it's incredibly misleading to have that button there, but it's unnecessary to click it. You just put the key there and you should be fine. And then uh, everything is grayed out. 
from multiple people. Like, oh, um, everything is grayed out. Hmm. Uh, okay. Developer oh. agreement. Click accept. Oh, help Euphoria. Oh, thank you, uh, Stefan, for that. Help Euphoria Engine. Okay, so yeah, help Euphoria Engine. Uh, show developer agreement. Okay, so I must have done this already. Then it'll take you to the developer agreement on the web page. Hopefully, you're still logged in to Euphoria. And just give this a quick scroll through. You might have time to long. read it. <laughs> It's pretty long. Um, I've already agreed to it, so I don't have a button or anything, but hopefully there's a button there for you. And uh, let me know if that fixes it, if that uh, allows you to access the panel. Perfect. We're seeing some people are there's no button, you just need to click accept. Okay, perfect. So I'll give everybody a second. Um, if you, everybody to paste their key here, um, let me know when you've pasted your key. Uh, so do not click add license. You don't need to add, uh, click that. It, uh, it will just open up another web page um, to get a license key. So you're good without clicking. Perfect. It looks like we have got quite a few people. Let me make sure to let me know. Uh, no need to click on add license. Yes, because you already have the key. Absolutely. Just figured the version problem trying to catch up. OK, fair enough. So I guess once you've got the version problem figured out, um, are you upgrading to a new version or uh, are you still figuring out the 2018? Deleted 20, okay. Okay, so um, yeah, so package manager, install Euphoria, uh, go to the website, get the key. Um, yeah. Okay. It's in help. Uh, someone's help. still trying to find the agreement. Yeah. Help Euphoria Engine show developer agreement. We got a lot of times here. Yeah. Um, once you get the, the developer agreement, uh, didn't yes, see, got it. I didn't see show. Yeah, no problem. It's just at the bottom there. So it is kind of tough to see. Uh, I missed it actually the first time when I didn't even know it was up there. Um, <laughs> I missed it the first time uh, I went to look as well. Um, so once you've got your code pasted here, we can scroll down and we are going to change our device. So here's, this is where we're gonna choose our device. Uh, this is if you wanna use your webcam to test the app. Otherwise, you can build to a mobile device. Uh, instead of showing developer agreement, there might be another text or button to accept the agreement. Okay. Fair enough, yeah. I guess if there might be like a shortcut in order to do that. Um, but yeah, so if you want to use your webcam, uh, you might have trouble using your webcam if you're uh, currently using it for the Zoom call. Um, otherwise, you can build to your device, which we'll cover um, a little later. Well, what I'll probably do for that step, like I'll, I'll go over that, how to do that later in the, uh, in the workshop, and I'll switch over 
to my microphone on my PC for that. Um, the only reason I'm using my phone and my PC separately is so I can test with my webcam because if I was in the Zoom call, it would take over my webcam. Um, so I'm going to switch to HD Pro webcam. The other one is the VR headset, which will not work for what we want. Um, so we just switch to HD Pro webcam. And is there an apply button? I don't believe there is. I think this is just fine. Okay. So if you want to use your webcam, make sure to select it here. It might already be selected if it's your only device. Um, and then so after the Zoom call, you should be able to test it using your webcam. And we'll cover how to use a device as well. How come I only have FaceTime camera? Uh, there's a chance that if you're using your laptop um, for the workshop, you, you will, may only have access. Uh, oh, steps after installing Vuforia. So you go to the uh, Vuforia website. I think I still have that open here. You sign in, go to License Manager, create a new development key, click it, copy it, and then open the Vuforia configuration, which is also a window, and you can paste the key here, an app license key. Harrison, is it possible for you to just copy and paste the key here in the chat box? So um, the I could, yeah, actually, yeah. That might be faster easier. For, yeah, given that most... Have to, um, people will still have to use Euphoria um, right. down the road, but for now, if you want to just paste okay. that key mm -hmm. in the Euphoria configuration, I think we should be okay with a number of uses. I think I think that should be fine. Hopefully, Euphoria won't try to charge me, but they don't have any of my payment information, so I <laughs> <laughs> let's see them come for me. Yeah, I, I see. Uh, someone has missed the step of webcam setup. Oh, okay. So the webcam uh, step um, in the Vuforia configuration, just scroll down and down here under webcam, you'll see camera device and you can select your webcam here. Uh, again, if you're using it in Zoom, you may have trouble selecting your webcam. Uh, it might be unavailable. Like it might not even show up in the list if you're using it in Zoom. Um, I only have FaceTime HD camera selection. Uh, that might be the one for your computer. I think fa FaceTime camera, may are you using a Mac? I think Mac, Mac may be. Oh yes, this, this HD Pro webcam, that's specifically my webcam. If you see FaceTime camera, that is likely the camera, um, the front facing camera of your Mac uh, laptop, which is totally fine too. It doesn't need to be any specific webcam. It actually works pretty great with the, um, the MacBook uh, webcam, if I remember correctly. Because uh, I did it in the 2008 version of my Pluralsight course. Um, this door, this isn't another shameless plug. This is, <laughs> this is relevant to the situation. Uh, I was developing on a Mac. Um, back then, and, uh, and it seemed to work pretty well. Uh, yes, so Maliha, uh, we don't need to do the step if we only want to use phone or camera. Yes, you don't need to do the step if you're using your phone camera. And Maliha, uh, you only have two things in your sample scene, in the camera and the directional light. Um, everybody should have those two things. Uh, I added the sphere myself to demonstrate what the CMP looks like. Perfect. Okay, so let's move on. Um, I just want to confirm that after importing all the sprite files, we need to select all of them and click the 2D something. Yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty close. I'll just go check that out again. So yes, so select all of them and uh, click 2D and UI, the sprite option. Perfect. So 
Uh, and so I'll answer any questions within this next um, section because this next section is pretty much a, a bit of an explanation. So I'm just going to actually show you guys the document that I'm reading from. This is what I prepared for this. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I have a little bit of information as well as a diagram to kind of go over what an image target is and what makes a good one. So if you're still catching up, you've got a little bit of time. This is the theory part of the workshop. So what we're doing today uh, and what you've seen in the, uh, one second, there's a question. Under inspector on the right, texture type. Oh, okay, someone's helping out, perfect. Yep, then apply the changes, excellent. Uh, thank you for your help, George, I appreciate it. Um, so an image target is basically like what I showed you when I tested the, uh, the animation, it's what, what was happening in the video I showed you. Uh, I wonder if I can still open that. So for example, this is an image target here. This picture that we have is an image target. So basically the AR uh, application looks for this, looks for this image, it has this image like loaded into it to look for, and when it finds it, it activates whatever digital animation or digital object that, uh, that we've decided will be put on top of it. Um, back to this, perfect. So when you're creating an image target, you have to follow some pretty important steps. And this will make clear why I had leaves on the other one before. So uh, an image target needs to be rich in detail, have good contrast, and no repetitive patterns. So this is because it acts as a unique ID, almost like how a QR code can be used to connect to a website. An image target needs to be really unique and have high contrast so the image uh, targeting system can find it. So for example, here we have uh, our bad image target. Uh, and let me know if you can, uh, I'll zoom in actually, there we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we have our bad image target, which is just a, white circle on a gray background. So not a lot of contrast, not a lot of variation because it's just a flat shape, um, flat colors and shades, and it's incredibly simple. Whereas the leaves, um, which is the exact same image that you saw me using with the, uh, the cactus earlier, it's high contrast. So like really like you've got a lot of white over here with some dark shadows under each leaf pretty much. Um, no repeating patterns. It's just a random pile of leaves and it's rich in detail. So we're seeing like a lot of variety here just in general um, in terms of like shades. Um, we've got shadows over top of the leaves that are creating a lot of contrast. Um, so and even the dirt, like the little specks of dirt, it creates a, it like pretty much the ideal image target that we're looking for. So now uh, to further demonstrate this and also to get some image targets in our scene, we are going to create our first image targets. Oh, um, there's a question. Does the app look for colors in the image or just patterns? Uh, it's entirely patterns. In fact, when we upload our first image targets, you'll see that the, uh, that the app only looks for shapes, and patterns, um, colors are not important. Um, so you can have a black and white background. You can even you can even have a colored image, um, but it uh, the app itself won't look for color. It, the color doesn't matter to it. So once we're done, uh, once now that we're done with that, we're going to go to the target manager in Vuforia Developer Portal. So open that back up and open up the target manager. I should probably delete some of these databases because a couple of them are repeats. And I want to create a new one. I believe I can select it, right? Well, it doesn't really matter. Now we're shell beginner. So I'll just delete these two targets. Um, but if you want to create your own target database, go to the page, uh, Target Manager, <clears throat> and select Add, uh, Add Database. 
Just give it a name, uh, any name will do, and click the device type because we'll be loading this database directly on to uh, the device that we're using. So in my case, the computer, um, and, or also your, uh, your mobile device if we build to that. And I guess, uh, let me know in the chat if you've got your database created and you've opened it. So get to this screen and let me know when you've completed that. <laughs> Big done in caps. Excellent, excellent. Looks like everybody is here. Excellent. Okay. So now you're going to see how this all works. So if you click add target, it'll give you an option, like a little modal to, of what you're going to add. We're just adding a single image and we are going to click browse, go to our assets folder, go into image targets, the image target folder. So we have the animation frames where all of our cactuses and stuff were. And then in image targets, we have these two images. So let's start with simple. Simple is just a white background with a cactus on it. So this is uh, basically the example of the non-ideal image target, um, just to see what that looks like. And for width, we're going to do width in scene units. So put 0 0.2. This is um, based off of the size of the image itself as well. Um, so it, we're putting it in Unity scene units, uh, sort of like converted from the size of the image. And then once you're done, we can just leave the name as simple. That's totally fine. And then we'll click Add. And let me know in the chat when you've added it, and I'll move on to the section that explains, because like I'm going to want you to watch this next bit if, uh, if you don't have it up on your screen. So once you've done that, let me know. And then uh, I'll show you some stuff. I'll show you how Euphoria interprets the image target. I think we got most people done. Yeah, I think it's, it's looking pretty done. So I'm going to refresh the page, and you can do this if you'd like as well. Uh, it'll say resend information, that's fine. We just want to see the processing. So this is actually, four star rainy is not terrible. Um, it's really not bad at all. Uh, we'll get some flickering if we try to use it, where the image will have some trouble staying on top of uh, the picture. Um, and the reason why this is okay, uh, if you click the image target, you go to the screen, you can click show features. As you can see, the cactus itself is actually the reason why this has as many stars as it does, because each point is an identifiable feature. Um, it's the variation on the cactus that actually allows the image to be seen. So this wouldn't be terrible as an image target on its own. The only issue is that because, uh, like at four stars, you're going to get some flickering. It's not going to be consistent tracking. You want something that's as good as it can possibly get. So back on the uh, target database screen, we're going to add another target, basically the same process, except we're going to select complex this time. And again, size is 0 0.2. And then do a refresh to see the star like the star rating it does not take a lot of time to process it's quite quick especially with the size of the image so when you refresh you should see that the complex one has a five star rating and if we click on it show features yeah show features link down at the bottom 
And if you're if you're looking at my screen right now, uh, 0 0.2, yep, 0 0.2. So if you're looking at my screen right now, you can see that not only does the cactus provide some complexity to the image, the background is just covered in features. Um, it is incredibly identifiable. Um, and also this kind of answers the question about color before. Um, I forgot about this. You notice that when I click show features, the cactus turns black and white because it's not the color that really matters. It's all of these little points of detail all over the image that allow it to be, uh, that allow it to be uh, seen. Um, can, can you repeat what 0 0.2 means? How do we decide that number? That number is uh, sort of a conversion between, uh, well, I think, oh, what, what was the actual thing? I think it was the size in meters of a piece of paper. So uh, a typical piece of like letter paper is eight inches by 11 inches, I believe. Um, so I'm just typing something in inches to meter. So not centimeters, meters. So about 11 inches. Yeah. So about 11 inches. So the, the width of a piece of paper. I'm just going to hold up a piece of paper to my phone screen if you guys can see that. So a bit about the width of a piece of paper is 11 inches. And so that converted to meters is 0 0.2794. So we're just simplifying that to 0 0.2. Um, and so not, I mean, I, like, I'm just clarifying it a lot because it, it going straight from inches straight to meters is a little ridiculous, but um, that's how uh, Unity sort of measures that sort of thing. Okay, um, no problem, happy to help. And I'm glad the explanation makes sense because sometimes I feel when I talk for that long, I'm not totally getting the point across. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, what's next? Right. Let me get the document open because I think, yeah, now that we've got our database, we can move on to adding it to our app. Yeah, good. I'm just making sure I'm not missing any crucial steps or explanations. Because uh, in case there's just something important that I need to bring up. Okay, no, we're good. Um, so now that we're all done with our database, we can download it. So click Download Database, select Unity Editor, and click Download. So that's Download Database, all, Unity Editor, and then Download. Save that wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, as long as it's somewhere you can find it. I'm going to move mine to my desktop, though. Just so I know where it is. And I'm going to delete the three off of it. Just because it doesn't need that. So you'll get something called the, the name of your database dot unity package. Um, is this different from the scenes folder we had in our unity project? Um, kinda, a little bit. Uh, you'll see like in a moment. Well, once you download the, the database and just save it to anywhere on your computer, you don't have to even save it in the project, just anywhere on your computer, as long as you know where to find it. And then we'll we'll bring it into our project in a moment. Um, so I guess drop it done when you have your database downloaded. Seeing eight done so far, nine. Okay, 11, oh, uh, JBC, thanks for, uh, I see you've caught up. That's excellent. Okay, looks like we are, everyone's catching up. 
perfect. Still got an error importing AR camera. Oh, you're actually a bit of a, a step ahead. Um, oh, I wonder what might be going on with you though. Why that's good, giving you an error. Okay, well, I follow along and see uh, see if these steps help you out. Uh, so now, if you've got the database downloaded, go to Unity. Click Assets. Just right-click on Assets, the folder itself. And... Click import new asset. Or wait, no, not import new asset. That's my bad, sorry. Click import package. And then custom package. So that's right click on assets, import package, custom package. I'm just gonna repeat that one more time. Assets, right click, import package, custom package. And that will open up a uh, file picker window. Excellent. Thank you, Clara. I appreciate the help, everybody. Um, so once you've got that window open, click the Unity package, the database that you exported from uh, the website, and click Open. And you'll see this screen here, this little uh, folder tree with all these checkboxes. Yes, I agree, Maliha. That is incredibly helpful. <laughs> Just in case somebody misses what I'm saying, that having that text there is really handy. I really appreciate that. So once you have that clicked, you'll see this little checkbox here. We want all of this. This is all the good stuff. So click import once the screen pops up. And we should have a couple new folders, resources, streaming assets. We don't really need to worry about these right now, but it's good. That, but they need to be here. So if they're here, then you know that you've imported it. So I guess let me know in the chat uh, if you've successfully imported the database. Perfect. Seen a lot of duns. Excellent. Okay, so now that we've got our sprites, we've got our database, we've got uh, our license key and everything configured, now it's time to actually get some AR working in our scene. So first step we can do <laughs> is uh, we can delete everything. Delete everything in the scene. Just Main camera, directional light, just delete all of it. We do not need any of that stuff. Get rid of all of it. Uh, you're not seeing a resource folder in assets. Um, hmm. And you've imported the database. You've, uh, there's a chance that the difference might be the Unity version. Um, it might, well, let's see, well, if I click resources, we've got the Vuforia configuration. So this might pop up, oh yeah, so this must be the Unity version. Um, oh, you updated the version, okay. Huh. Hmm. Well, uh, I'll, I'll keep going, but see if, 2019 personal. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, but see if, um, if by following the steps, things uh, still end up working out. Um, but yeah, so you're deleting everything in the scene. It's all gone. Our next step, we're gonna right click on the scene, hierarchy, and go to Euphoria Engine, right there, there at the bottom. So that's a right click, Euphoria Engine, and AR Camera. And so you'll see something in the scene view, um, nothing will really be there because it's just a camera object. So it's just a virtual camera that uh, that will be used to show some augmented reality stuff. <laughs> That's the official term. Um, 
Next up, right click again, go to Vuforia Engine, and click Image. So that's a right click, Vuforia Engine, Image. And you should see something super tiny appear in your scene view. Something like barely perceptible, just so small. And that is because we have a little image target thing here that's scaled to 0 0.2. If you double click it in the scene view, I mean in the hierarchy, you'll zoom in. And you'll see this little picture. As you can see, uh, because we imported our database, you should see one of the images. So uh, from Alia, right click. Go to Vuforia Engine and click Image, and that adds the image target. And so once you do that, since you have that database already installed, you'll see the image. It'll be this little thing, just double click it, and you'll zoom in on it. Uh, Harrison, can you uh, show the image target one more time? Right click on image target. Sure, yeah, right, uh, right click on hierarchy. So the image target, so I'm gonna delete this actually, let's we'll delete this. Right click on hierarchy, so this hierarchy panel, this whole panel here. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this opportunity to draw. No one can stop me. Bam, 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 <laughs> bam, bam. Look at that beautiful box. Now, you right click here, and go to Euphoria Engine, and click Image. Now I'm gonna erase this disgusting box. There we go. Uh, and so now you should see this little picture here. Uh, so it's a right click. Uh, so when it appears, it might look a little bit on an angle. Um, so hover over the scene view, hold down Alt, and then click to drag, and you can rotate it here. Um, so you don't have to double click. You just, oh, oh, to zoom in. Sorry, that's my bad. Um, so double click for zooming. The, the word image target, that zooms you in. So here I do it again. Double click to zoom in. Uh, okay, good, good, good. You're seeing it. See, I told you it's small. It's tiny. <laughs> it is so, so, so small. Like you, you have to zoom in in order to see it. So it's going to appear that there's nothing there unless you zoom in on it. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, so does everybody have their image targets? Uh, and they've zoomed in on it, throw me a done if you have. Some duns and some Ds, some Ds in the chat. Thank you very much. Excellent, looks like we've got a lot of people who are done. Okay, cool. So now that we've got our image target, and as you can see, it's already set to the image that we've, uh, the complex image. So if you click on it in the sample seeds, so just a single click, you'll see it appear in the inspector over here. You'll see all this. Now I'm gonna minimize some of this stuff just to clear some space and not distract you guys. The important part is this, image target behavior. So the image target behavior, as you can see, uh, we have a database already selected. So this is our database that we created. And we have the image target. So we can go to simple or we can go to complex. Simple, complex. Complex is the best one, uh, you know, because the tracking uh, is better for that. So we're gonna stay on complex. But if you wanna see what simple looks like when it's uh, being tracked, you can switch over the target later, um, and I might demonstrate that as well. You can switch over the target later in the workshop um, when you're testing it to see what that looks like, to see how it tracks, um, and, to, and to compare the difference. There might not be that much of a difference, 
Um, but there is a chance that you might get some flickering with the, with the simple one. Um, one moment. I think I need a charger for my phone because I think it is going to die soon. Um, that's what I get for using it for the workshop. So I'll be one moment. Just to, oh, God, one second. I'm going to answer that question. A nasty error imported image target with Euphoria, DLL version conflict. Oh, God. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Um, if you want, uh, later on, I could probably help you individually because it sounds like you're dealing with quite a few different uh, errors. But yeah, um, for now, just follow along. And maybe if you retry it when you uh, uh, watch the video over again or, or read through the script, um, hopefully you'll get some success because it sounds like you're having some really unfortunate issues right now. So I'm going to grab a charger for my phone. Oh, well, okay, yeah, I don't want to risk it. I'll be right back. So guys, we might be running over for a couple minutes, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Is that cool with everyone? I mean, feel free to drop off if you have to leave and we'll still try to share the, the video clips later on. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, the ones in Shanghai and in China, thank you. <laughs> if you're still around, try to get some sleep tomorrow. <laughs> and stay hydrated. Okay, so you might not be able to see me, um, but no. uh, you should still be able to hear me, so that's okay. Okay, what are we looking at? <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you're just still looking at my screen. Uh, I think I've still got the screen up, right? Yes, you the see screen ceiling? share is still working, yes. It's okay, it's okay, as long as we get screen some couple time later. Yeah, I promise. I absolutely promise, Puppy Pup. And you know, when my phone is 100% charged, it'll get lots of puppy. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So, so now we've got the image uh, up there. We've got the uh, image target selected. My phone is charging, so it won't die, which is good. Now we can add our animated sprite. So. Next up, let's open our sprites folder and you'll see all of your images. So select all of them, every single one. All of the, and so this is important actually, make sure you select all of them at the same time. Uh, Cause this all has to happen at once. So just select every single image and drag the whole thing, just click and drag into the hierarchy. And when you do that, you'll get a save window. So what's happening now is um, Unity detected that we were dragging a bunch of images into the hierarchy and knew that we wanted to make an animation out of them automatically. It saw that we were dragging a bunch of sprites all at once and knew that we wanted to create an animation. So let's just call this animation cat and cactus save. And we'll want to do this for the object as well. So now that we've put our object in the scene, currently it's just called one because it's named after the first frame. We'll just click that and call it cat and cactus. Okay. And you may notice there's something in the scene, <laughs> at least on my screen, if you look at my screen, there's uh wait, I see a question. Oh, okay, no, that's not a question. That's just a clarification from Clara. Perfect. 
Um, so you may see something in the scene when you add it. A giant cactus, something that's way bigger than <laughs> the picture itself. Uh, that's because we need to shrink that down. Um, I'm just making sure that everything is good. How am I moving the screen? Um, I am holding down the Alt button. If you're on a Mac, that might be the Option key, I think the equivalent, and then you click and you drag in the scene view. Let me know if that is correct for Mac. <laughs> I kind of forget. Perfect, okay. So now we want to make our animation, uh, actually I'll wait till everybody has uh, let me know. Let me know if you're done putting the uh, cat and cactus, you named it, all that stuff, or if you need any step repeated, make sure to let me know. Um, Yuru, uh, your, your seems really weird. Uh, is it normal that in the sprites panel I have a huge triangle at the end? Uh, yes, that, that is normal. That is, a, that is just a, a drop-down panel. Uh, named Cat and Cactus, yep. Um, it yeah, might no, I got it. Thank you. Oh, you're good? Okay. Yeah, if it's giant, that's okay. Do not fret we will be fixing that in a moment. So if it looks like it's just big and in the middle of nowhere, that's totally cool. Do not worry. We'll be moving on in a second to fix that. Um, okay, so it seems like everyone's done. We've renamed a cat and cactus. Let's drag it, click, drag, and put it on image target. So that way you'll see this little arrow next to it. I'll just expand this. You can see, oh, that doesn't really make a difference. Um, you'll see this little arrow next to image target that can collapse. So cat and cactus is now a child object of image target. So image target is its parent, and cat and cactus is the child of image target. Now this is important because if, uh, I, I believe uh, Yuru said that her problem was solved. Um, she ch she uh, chimed in with the mic for a second to let us know. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, so this is important. Cat and Cactus needs to be a child of image target in order for um, it to appear, in order for the animation to appear when the image target is detected. Um, next up, to you know, get away from all this confusing business of it being giant, um, we will change the size. Now, I have the exact values necessary to change it. Um, so you might want to look at my screen for this um, to get the values and go back and forth. I'll leave them up because if you try to size this down yourself, it will get annoying. So set the Y position to 0 0.005, which, will, which basically puts it above, well, actually, I'll explain that in a second. Set the rotation of the X axis to 90. Uh, you won't see anything yet, but this next step should take us there. Uh, set the scale on every axis to 0 0.05. 0 point, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Perfect. So I'm going to leave this up for a second, let everybody catch a glimpse. And once you have that, I'll explain what we just did. Thank you, Catherine. Got lots of duns. Yeah, you see the little cute cat now. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so this first frame has the cat just in just in the scene. Seems like we got a lot of done. So I'm going to explain this. So we set the y-axis to 0 0.005 because that puts it 
right above, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, puts it right above the image, just like a little bit above the image. Just like a small amount, so it's right in front of it. Um, then we set the rotation to just have it flat on its side. Where's the cat from though? Uh, this whole animation, um, Catherine, who created this? Uh, my wife <laughs> created this. Oh yes, right, yes. Um, so this is not necessarily from anything, it is a custom animation. Oh yes, so this is a really handy um, thing, Maliha. Um, so hold Option, I believe, on a Mac, or Alt on a Windows keyboard, and like how you would move around like this, right click instead, and then you can pull in and out. And Maliha, I really appreciate you asking the questions because I would totally gloss over this if you weren't. <laughs> so this is probably some pretty helpful information for people. You can zoom in and out like this. Let me know if you got it to make sure that I, I got the correct, I got the idea correctly, the buttons. I think I did something weird, hold on, fair enough. Okay, so everyone's got their, their images set up. Okay, so actually, um, yeah, so that's how you zoom. Uh, but now uh, that everyone has this, you should be good. Like we are basically done. <laughs> we have like one more step after this, but for the most part, we've got what we need. Um, I will show you right now, I'll demonstrate. So I'm gonna click the play button and my webcam should come on. Hello. And now I've got the image and boom, there we are. And that, that as you can see, it seems to, I, I, I see like the screen share is not really, it doesn't have a really great frame rate. So I'm just going to move a little slower so you can see that the, uh, that it sticks. Uh, if, I mean, if you if you followed up till now, then you you probably didn't miss anything. It's that simple. Like if we if we uh, added our our image database, if you added the image target, it is that's all that needed to be done to get it this far, right? It's it's that easy. Like there's a lot of steps to get everything set up, but if you have the image printed, like that's going to be the key there. Um, if you want to try this on your device, um, what you're going to want to do is go to File, Build Settings, oh, so what should we print out? So print out the one that you want to test. Um, so currently Complex is the one that I'm using and it is the better one. Yeah, complex image target. Do I need to open up my camera to see this? Uh, you might. Um, if you're using your camera, uh, there's also, um, I'm, I'll explain in a moment how to get it on your device as well. Uh, if you, if we got time, can you please elaborate a bit on how the sprites for the entire animation were, were created? So I'll, I guess, um, Catherine will have to explain uh, I guess, well, she can explain how her wife uh, made the animation. But uh, essentially, and this is actually pretty straightforward, that's why I'm just going to explain right now. Um, if, as long as you just like draw, just draw frame by frame the animations, export them as PNGs. If, you're an, if you've got animation software, you can export them as PNGs, and that would be absolutely fine. Um, and how do you get to the play? So the play button is at the top here. It is at the, the very top. There's a little play button at the top. Uh, and it was drawn in Photoshop, yeah. Twenty something frames. You got twenty four frames. It looks like for the two seconds. Uh, 
Um, okay, so um, now that I've demonstrated, and my phone, even though it's plugged in, does not seem to be happy with this, I'm going to switch over to using my PC mic, which should be clearer <laughs> for starters and uh, a little bit better. So one second. Right clicking all on the mic, unmute. Testing. Testing. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Ah. <laughs> well, uh how about now? Okay, that that fix it. Let me know if you can hear me or if you've got any echo. Sounds good now. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I have my speak my headphones on so I can hear anybody who has anything to say. And if you want, I can turn on my webcam, but I'll wait for the moment. Um, okay, so cool. Everyone can hear me. Awesome. And there's no more echo. And this should be good. Okay, perfect. So now that we've uh, we've completed that, we've got our animation now. Um, I'm going to walk through quickly how to build to a device. So when you want to build to a device, click on File build settings and this will open up this window here click on the platform you want so if i want to build for android i can click android currently there's no device plugged in but uh and you might need uh android studio to install install the android sdk installing on device might be a little odd um, but you might need Android Studio, or if you're on iOS, you might need Xcode. Um, that's going to be like a an extra step. Um, but yeah, then once you have all that, I'm going to see if I can actually just plug my phone in just to show you. It does not have a lot of power, but it might behave for the sake of this. I somehow moved my image target off the screen. <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Okay. Fair enough. Oh yeah, I'm seeing my ah, see this is me. This is my my nice microphone. I'm gonna disconnect from the call on my phone because you don't need that anymore. Cool. So now it's just me on my PC. Okay, plug in my phone into my computer. Perfect. Okay, so we should see at some point, it should say what app I have, or I mean, what, um, what I'm using, unless this cable is gonna be annoying. <laughs> Your mic is pro. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, this, I use this for recording music and stuff as well. Um, okay. Why is this working? It might be having trouble um, detecting my phone because I think this cable might be a little odd. But basically, you go to build settings. You click add open scenes and that'll add our sample scene. You click the device that you want. So Android in my case, and you click build and run. So that would build the entire project and it would run it on your phone. Um, you may need to install an Android SDK. Uh, this might already be installed by Unity. Um, 
Or if you're doing iOS, you would have to uh, have Xcode installed. How do we use our phone? So th that's what I'm explaining right now. Um, this is how you would use your phone to display the, uh, the animation. So you go to File, Build Settings, and make sure you have your phone plugged into your computer. Mm. Uh, Catherine, can you actually um, talk about how you got it to work on iOS? Because it seems like we probably have a lot of uh, Mac users here. Uh, I, I, oh, I haven't, I haven't true, haven't tried how to use phone to show that animation, but I just like import that picture to my iPad and it shows on my computer's camera to, uh, to recognize it. So instead of printing it, um, if you download the image and showing it on another... Yeah, I, I, I just pull in that PNG, the background, on, the, uh, on my iPad and it showed on my uh, laptop's camera, then it works. Uh, and to answer Roberto, is it possible to publish our creation somewhere? If you want to use this same method and, and, and create your own animation, um, from today's workshop, definitely post it on any social media and just uh, at us. We'll try to do a compilation when we uh, receive enough. Uh, yeah, so, um, and I just switched my microphone. So if I'm really loud, let me know. Um, Cause I realized I wasn't actually using my good one. I was using my webcam. Um, uh, there, okay, perfect. There, I'm not sure if there is like a actual, like a place to publish creations. Um, like there's a, a platform for this sort of thing. Um, but if you figure out how to like get this exported or something, or even if you just have a video of something you've created, I would love to see it. I think that just like if you post on social media or something, I would love to see it. Cause I think that'd be really cool to see what you guys can come up with. Oh yeah. And you can export an APK for Android for sure. Yeah. An APK. So um, there's one more small thing I'll just quickly go over um, that might be helpful to you. Um, so just one last thing. So in Unity, um, I'm going to add another folder. Oh, you sh it worked. Oh, perfect. Yeah. On the iPad and it works. Excellent. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just going to quickly do one thing. So I'm going to create a folder in my assets and I'm going to call it scripts. In scripts, I'm going to right click import new asset. So not the, not the package custom package part, new asset. I'll explain what I'm doing in a moment. <laughs> this will make more sense. I promise. Um, desktop. Uh, so go to your folder where all the images were. So this is the script, the script I was talking about before, image target controller. Import this script into the scripts folder. <laughs> Catherine is an impressive typer. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear that typing and I'm just like, I'm a programmer and I can't even type that fast. <laughs> Your fingers are moving. Thanks. Um, <laughs> but, uh, because of coding training. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So this, this script, um, this is just a little like extra step if you want, um, that basically will, uh, make it so the animation restarts every time the image is detected. So currently in its current state, it will be animating constantly over and over again. Um, whereas you might want it like, like with that book I showed you, like with that, that video I showed you, you might want the, the animation to start from the beginning 
um, every time that the image is detected. Now it's a short animation, so if you test this yourself, you might have trouble seeing the fact that it repeats over and over again. But um, currently it doesn't restart from the beginning. So this script will help with that. Click on, uh, so click on Cat and Cactus and drag the script into the inspector right here. Perfect. You can see here we've got uh, uh, image target controller script with an animator and a target animation uh, field. Once you've got those, you can drag. We've got uh, both our animation and our animator are in the sprites folder. So we drag the animator into the animator. Is that, is that the animator? Oh, okay, I see, right, sorry, my, my bad. Um, drag the cat and cactus object into the animator field, and that will grab the animator component from the cat and cactus object. Uh, if you click on cat and cactus, you will see there's an animator above it right here. So it's grabbing that. It automatically grabs what it needs just from the object being put in there. It's, uh, it's one of the great things about Unity. Next, take the cat and cactus animation clip from sprites and plop it down in there. So that knows like what animation it, it's looking for to like replay, to reset. Um, actually, can I test this? I think, yeah, I don't have my webcam on. I might actually be able to test this. Oh, that's my big face. One second. I want to be able to see the rest of the inspector. Okay, so we got our, oh, it's still going. Can you repeat the steps after importing the script? Uh, okay, yep. Yeah. So once you've imported the script, oh right, no, it, it still animates. It just like resets. Um, anyways, um, so once you've imported the script, drag it onto like click cat and cactus, drag the script onto the object from like onto the inspector. Um, Maliha, can you clarify your question? But uh, like, are you asking, can you test the animation by building and running on the laptop? Uh, because if you're asking if it's possible, then you should be okay. Yeah, like you can build and run, uh, from the laptop, I believe that creates a executable file, like an app file, or you can test it by clicking the play button at the top of the screen here, just the play button here. You'll see my face again in a moment. The little play button up here. Um, so anyways, right, the, uh, the script. So you drag the script onto Cat and Cactus, then you drag cat and cactus onto the animator field here. So I'm gonna use a draw, here I go, drawn again. Drag that uh, here, uh, uh, here, <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, I'll draw a better one. Drag that here. And then in sprites, whoops, I need to get my mouse back. Then in sprites, you'll see the, uh, this thing here, back to drawing, this cat and cactus animation clip, that goes here. Man, the drawing, I'm having a good time. <laughs> Sorry, I was asking, uh, now that we've created this project, I wanna have the complex image on my iPad. How do I see the project we created work on the iPad image. Yeah, you, you should be able to use it on your laptop. So if you press play on the play button, uh, like at the top of the screen, and then you have the image on your iPad and you hold it up to the camera, that should show the animation. 
And this is where I, this is the part of the workshop where I desperately hope that 30 people get the same result. <laughs> How uh, would I export an APK file that I can run on Android? Do I just save this file as an APK file? Um, you can export it to your phone. Um, you can also export an APK, I believe. Uh, let me just see. Um, so build settings, Android. I believe there is a button here. Oh, oh, right. So when you, when you build and run, when you click build and run, um, I wish my phone was working so I could show you. Cause when you click build and run, it'll, it'll ask you to save the, uh, the APK. It'll it, like, it'll ask you to save it. Um, and you can save it on your, on your computer. But uh, yeah, try export project. I'll take a look at that. Um, there is no export. So, but I know for I know for a fact that if you um if you go from here, then you can build, um, and it will allow you to save an APK on your computer. Oh, oh who is that? that? Export. Project. There's a puppy here. One second. I'm going to turn on my camera. I hope you're ready for puppy. Um, <laughs> oh, you're about to get distracted. Um, start video. Oh, can you see me? Oh, and here's little Tulio. Oh, it, it, he did this. Yeah, this is my puppy. He needs an Instagram account. We've been told that a couple times today. Yeah. Oh. This is Tulio. He is a sweet little dog, and we love him very much. <laughs> How old is Tulio? Two, He's two eight months? weeks old. Oh. Very young. How very big does small. he get? Oh, he's not going to get very big. He is a, a small, 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 small dog. Very like uh, like he's he's a mixture of like a Pomeranian, Maltese, and uh, oh. Yorkie which is like all the smallest dogs put together. <laughs> so here is the puppy time. Oh. I love him very much. And this is Lindsay, by the way. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> uh, everyone says hi. Yeah, I can't hear <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Malia has a, a fun background, Sailor Moon oh, background. <laughs> but yeah. He's, and he's very good. Like, he... You hold him like this, and he immediately is just like, this is how I am. This is, this is how I live. <laughs> you put him down, though, and he'll, uh, he'll nip on your fingers because he's so young. He does uh, not know uh, that he shouldn't bite yet because he's too young. But, uh, he, but it's the gum, right? He, he, he's not teeth. No, anymore. he has little teeth. He has little uh, dagger teeth. <laughs> oh, wow. They're so does sharp. It, he must smell good. Uh, you, I, you keep smelling him. Well, actually, no, I'm, I'm just pressing my face against him because he's very furry. I actually have no sense of smell. That's a fun fact about me. Oh. I, was, I, I was born with no sense of smell. So Lindsay tells me that he smells very good. <laughs> okay. I, I have heard this, but I personally can't smell. That is, uh, I was born that way. I haven't smelled a thing in my life. That's a fun fact. That's a fun fact about Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> but the fluffiness... The fluffiness is just hard to ignore. He is just, oh, so good. And I guess Lindsay was grabbing him some yeah, food. Yeah, I was getting him some food. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Lindsay take him away. He was like uh, clicking whatever, who knows what. I'll yeah, he's probably so. hungry. So I can... Is he done a poo-poo? No, I was trying to get the collar on, so I knew he would be trying to take him outside. Oh, yeah, we'll try and take him outside? Okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry about talking about my dog's bathroom habits in front of you. <laughs> How do you get work done? It, it, honestly, it remains to be seen. This is like the first day while he's in the house. <laughs> like I uh, can't set target animation. Okay, so we're gonna move, okay. we're gonna move back. I'm gonna okay. I might even disable the camera. So, <laughs> uh, um, is there a way to preview the animation without running the scene? So okay, we're back over on my scene. Um, and someone says the unit shuts off every time they click play. Unity shuts off every time you click, click play. That's 
not normal. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just, I'm going to think of, I'm going to think about the questions. Uh, say, yeah, it could be CPU usage or memory usage. Um, it could be just a crash. Maybe it doesn't like using your webcam. That's possible. Um, I sometimes have had Unity crash. Actually, didn't it crash during the test run for the workshop at one point? I think maybe once. Was it? I think I, cl I clicked play and it didn't like my web, like, like that I asked it to use my webcam and then it just crashed. Um, and is there a way to preview the animation without actually running the scene? Uh, let me see. Um, if you want, you can click. Uh, let me see. Actually, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try something. Um, let's delete it. and then camera, and then maybe move the camera. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just testing something now. Like uh, I'm just right now just testing something small, just to see if this works. Or even is it? Oh, it might be. Oh, there it is. Woo! Okay. Perfect. Okay, we're getting there. I'm just, uh, I'm trying something right now. I'm just, um, there's that. And if I put it at maybe eight, it might need to be a little bit smaller. Let's try zooming it in a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, it's too close. Um, and then we'll do that. Okay, so what I just did is I added a second camera which is uh, just like a non AR camera. And I disabled the AR camera and I moved this camera to 0 0.4 at 90 degrees. And I'm going to see if this works. I'm a little not sure. I don't think it worked. I was really hoping that would work, but it didn't. Oh, it might be because it's on the image target. Um, if you do this, you might have to dismantle the scene a little bit to get it to work. Oh, but there we go. Um, so now I've got, so I, I used, basically I used the camera to show it without augmented reality. Um, so you can see the animation happening if you do this. Um, but you might have some issues. There, there are, there's a chance you might have some issues. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, that's, I mean, that's everything. Um, if anybody has any more questions, how do we exit the play mode? Uh, click the play button again. So once you're in play mode, click the play button again, it might break because it's trying to use my webcam. Um, no, it's actually okay. Um, so yeah, just click the play button again. Okay. Uh, I think we've, uh, passed the time 30 minutes. And uh, if you have further questions, you can either contact us or contact Harrison through Twitter. Oh, yeah. You can DM me on Twitter or if you want to. Um, some people found me on LinkedIn and uh, messaged me there. That's totally cool with me as well. Um, and also, uh, I guess this video, um, if you missed a step, you can always go back and watch through the video and you'll see everything, yes. um, all the steps. Yeah, so uh, we will send you the recording for this video. So if, if you want to review any steps, you can do that. And before we end, uh, last thing I want to take everyone is just one minute uh, to have a small uh, feedback survey for today. So I will launch it in Zoom right now. It's a poll, so, and we won't take the name can everyone see this? Oh, Paul. Yeah. So, yeah, we hope to get more uh, as 
as much as feedback as we can. And uh, we will plan more workshops for the creative coding part. And for someone who's interested in how to make this small animation stuff, we may can also prepare a workshop about this part. Then, then in future, you can create your own animation plus the AR and uh, finish your own work. I'm like looking at this, uh, this uh, poll and I'm like, oh, how do I rate my own workshop? <laughs> You know what? I'm going to abstain, especially because I think I'm still screen sharing. <laughs> Actually, I don't think you guys can even see it, but um, I'm going to abstain because I don't know how to answer these questions. No, oh, yeah. I guess I can stop the screen share because that's pretty much everything. I tried to I, you rate this workshop excellent since you're the instructor. I should what's oh, rate it as excellent. I, I could, but that sounds like cheating. You know, I, I'd feel bad. <laughs> Thank you for participating and staying with us, even though we went uh, kind of over. Yeah, thank you for sticking around and uh, and joining us. Like that was that was a lot of fun. I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you coming in to to learn all about augmented reality stuff. I hope that um, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you love the puppy. Love lovely puppy. <laughs> and I hope you had a good time. Um, again, like yeah, hopefully you'll uh, be able to if you had any issues. Hopefully, be able to watch the video and uh, catch up. And hopefully uh, figure that out what to do next because I would just love to see what all you can create with this type of uh, this type of stuff because I feel like there's a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities, um, a lot of cool things you can create with this technology. Um, so I'd love to see it. Cool. I think that's everything for today. Thank you for your join, and I hope you had a great time with us. Yeah, thank you very much.